What's going on YouTube? 5.7L Hemi, and I'm back today with another video for you guys. And this is gonna be a how-to video on how to replace an O2 sensor on your Dodge Charger. All right guys, so the reason that I'm changing this O2 sensor is because um, it gave me a check engine light. My check engine light came on and uh, the code for it is uh, P0153. And basically all it is, is a um, slow response code, also high voltage. So guys, all that basically mean is uh, an O2 sensor went out. So I have right here, guys, the O2 sensor that I'm gonna be replacing it with today. And this is a uh, NGK O2 sensor. It say NTK on the box, but it's actually uh, made by NGK. And as you guys see right there, that this is uh, made by NGK instead. I guess NTK is a subsidiary of uh, NGK, I guess. And for those of you guys who want to know the part number, there it is right there. This old 2 sensor, guys, that I'm replacing is on uh, Bank 2, uh, Sensor 2. So Bank 2 is on the uh, passenger side of the car because uh, Bank 1 is the driver's side. So it'll be Bank 2, Sensor 2. Um, O2 sensor that I'm replacing and these right here guys are the extensions that I'm gonna be using I got new extensions um, these are O2 sensor extensions and I have new ones right here that I'm gonna uh, go ahead and use instead of the older ones that I have when I first did my pace setter long tube headers on my car and I did that about almost three years ago but this part here, this end of it, uh, connect to the car's wiring um, from the car's wiring harness and uh, the other end of it right here plugs into the actual O2 sensor itself. And it's a four prong or four pin um, O2 sensor extension, guys. So I'm gonna leave these here for the moment and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the car jacked up I haven't done it yet. I got my jack right here, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and use, this is the same jack that I use also when I go to the track. Um, jack my car up and uh, put the jack under the rear end and I uh, jack it up at the rear end. That way it uh, jacked the car on both sides. So it's basically a one and done. Just get the jack under the rear end and jack it up. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and give me a moment so I can uh, get my jack under here and I'm gonna put it under the uh, the subframe or underneath the cradle that's uh, closest to the radiator. I just put the jack directly under it and uh, just jack the whole front end of the car at, the, at, uh, at one time instead of doing it from both sides. Then I got my jack stands right here for safety that I'm gonna put on both sides of the car to so keep it from uh, crushing me in the event of uh, an emergency happening. Something like that, guys. It's always safety first, you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it jacked up, guys. And I'll get under here and uh, show you guys uh, which sensor I'm going to be replacing. Alright you guys I'm back and as you can see I got the car jacked up and I got it supported on uh, jack stands and I got my jack uh, under the front of the car. Uh, it's under the, uh, the cradle, the engine cradle right here. So that's how I got it uh, supported right there. Like I said, I just put my jack right under the front of the cradle right there and jack it up. And it got both uh, tires off the ground. I don't have to uh, jack it up on the left and the right side and everything and it's not gonna fall or nothing like that. I got my jack stand right there. 
And then again, I have my other jack stand right there, you know, just in case. Because the name of the game, guys, is safety first. So I've already went ahead and uh, disconnected the battery because you always want to disconnect your uh, battery. I always disconnect my battery um, at the negative post. So I just basically, I uh, undo the black wire on the battery, the battery terminal, and that kills all power to everything. All right guys, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, get under here. I'm gonna show you guys the tools needed to do this job. And uh, basically all you need guys is a, uh, in my case, a crescent wrench. Your application may be different than mine if you're uh, if you don't have long tube headers, because I have long tube headers on my car, and uh, so me doing the installation of the uh, O2 sensor on my car will be a little bit different than yours. But uh, I'm gonna get under here, guys, and give you guys a closer look at the setup. So hold tight. All right, you guys, so I'm underneath the car now, and uh, I don't have a whole lot of room under here. Uh, I do have enough room under the car to uh, do what I need to do with this uh, O2 sensor right here. And this is a Bank 2, Sensor 2, O2 sensor right here. And this is Bank 2, Sensor 1 right here, guys. Don't mind these wires right here, because I'm about to do something about these right now. This is just temporary. Um, that's why I went ahead and got a new O2 sensor wires uh, extensions. So I could do away with this because this is, uh, like I say guys, this is just something that I did temporarily. And uh, I'm gonna get rid of this um, here in this video today, guys. But uh, yeah, uh, Bang 2 Sensor 2, I mean Bang 2 Sensor 1, I'm sorry. This is Bang 2 Sensor 1 right here. And if you follow my uh, Catless Mid Pipe, this is Bang 2 Sensor 2 right here, guys. And uh, these are our Pace Setter Catless Mid Pipes right here. And they're going to uh, the stock um, X Pipe came with the car. So this is a stock X pipe right here. And uh, down there guys are my uh, MagnaFlow mufflers. So, coming back up this way on the driver's side, this will be bank one sensor two right here guys. And following the pipe again, Catless mid pipe up here. This is bank one, sensor one, O2 sensor right here. All right. So the reason that I need the extensions, guys, is because uh, I have long tube headers and everything, and it basically um, extended the O2 sensors back further away from the car's factory uh, wiring, which would be up here. See, here's the, uh, the O2 sensor wiring. And uh, when you're getting using O2 sensors on your car, if you have long tube headers, really the only ones that you can use are uh, NGK or Mopar O2 sensors, because any other brand is just gonna give you problems. So I'ma just, let you guys know that up front. Whatever other um, O2 sensor you find, no matter how good a deal you find it for, it's gonna give you a problem in a real short amount of time too. So, guys, go with uh, NGK O2 sensors, whether you have a Chrysler, a Dodge, a uh, Magnum Challenger, 1500 Ram, whatever it is that you got, uh, your Dodge vehicle is not gonna like any other O2 sensor except for an NGK or a, a Mopar O2 sensor. So I went with NGKs. All right, guys, so on this O2 sensor right here on bank one, uh, sensor one, the uh, factory wire is not real long at all, guys. So as you can see, I have 
an extension hooked up to it right now. And that'll be this guy right here with the red and yellow wires in it. That's an extension, guys. And it goes up to the uh, car's uh, factory wiring and it's so far, well, yeah, it's so far up in there you can't even see it. But I'm gonna be changing this up also because uh, the cars, these O2 sensor uh, extensions that I have on here are actually a little bit too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take care of that with these uh, new extensions that I have. All right, guys. I don't want to make a video that's too long and too boring for you guys. So what I'm gonna do is end this video right here. Uh, I'm gonna make a part two to it right now, guys, and uh, check out part two for the uh, removal of the old O2 sensor. That'll be this one right here that I'm gonna be getting at. But uh, guys, you want to see more videos like this? Uh, hit the like button, uh, comment share the video and most importantly guys subscribe to the channel uh, it means a lot to me and it'll help the channel also so i'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here guys and uh check out part two of the uh o2 sensor uh removal and install all right